the Weiner Monen and Il Marinen were a pair of coastal defence ships built for the navy of Finland in the interwar years, named after a pair of mythological heroes from the epic poem Kalevala. The need for the ships arose due to the state of the Finnish navy, which in the 1920s consisted of a bunch of former Imperial Russian ships which some rather inventive Finnish sailors had acquired in much the way, same way as many colonial powers had acquired their colonies. However, these ships were of a variety of ages, and thanks to the state of the Russian navy in the last years of World War I as revolution took over, many of them had come into Finnish service in a rather worn-out condition, and many of them were also quite small and obsolete in any case. They had been designed for open sea operations, which didn't really line up with the more coastal and much more frequently icy waters around Finland. This led to the need for a new Finnish navy, and the Finnish Navy Act in 1927 was passed, designed to replace the old ships with designs that were more suited to the needs of the country. But of course, Finland was not exactly a world-shaking naval power, and had neither the money nor the need for full-size battleships. Instead, they went for a program that in many ways resembled that of their Scandinavian neighbours, building submarines, destroyers, and a pair of coastal defence ships. For this last purpose, they turned to an engineering firm based in the Netherlands, whose employees all spoke suspiciously good German, called NV Engineerskantor Voorschipsbouw, and told them that seakeeping could be sacrificed for optimal shallow water protection. Whilst many coastal defence ships were something like a slow armoured cruiser, the Sverige class in Sweden had set a new standard in size and capability, and the Finnish ships would end up somewhere between the old paradigm and these top-of-the-line units. They were quite small, displacing just under 4,000 tonnes, with a shallow draft and a relatively slow top speed of just under 15 knots, which came from a modest 4,800 shaft horsepower, driving two propellers. However, despite having the speed of a monitor and the displacement of a very small cruiser, the armament was considerable, especially for a ship of their size. The main battery consisted of four 10-inch Bofors guns in a pair of twin turrets arranged one fore and one aft in the manner of a pre-dreadnought. A secondary battery of eight dual-purpose 4-inch guns in four twin turrets was laid out with one turret super-firing over each main turret with the two remaining turrets positioned on the port and starboard wings, meaning that three-quarters of the secondary battery was available on almost all bearings. Four 40mm cannon and a pair of 20mm cannon completed the ship's armament as they were designed. With long-range heavy guns came the need for a high mast for spotting and ranging equipment, but this, and their shallow draft, led to some rather significant rolling in anything but a flat calm, which had to be remedied to a degree in later refits with work to the underside of the ships. The primary purpose of these vessels was not to engage an invading enemy in a direct gunfight, or even, to be honest, to be the primary defence of the coastline. Instead, the Finns aimed to exploit the extensive coastal defence battery network left to them by the Imperial Russian era, alongside the extensive network of islands that made up much of their littoral environment. In this scenario, invading ships would have to carefully pick their way between and around islands through narrow deep water passages, primarily worrying about a rain of fire from coastal batteries, whereupon they could be flanked by the coast defence ships and then caught in a deadly crossfire from positions that the hostile ships themselves could not reach. At those ranges, the limited armour-piercing capability of the 10-inch guns against battleships was less of a problem. Uh, th meanwhile, the ship's own armour was just over 2 inches, about enough to keep out destroyer-grade weapons and light secondary batteries, but again, being designed for close-range operations, there was precious little point in anything thicker, since any substantially heavier guns would penetrate any realistic amount of armour that could actually be fitted. Both vessels were laid down in 1929, launched in 1930 and 1931, and entered service in 1932 and 33. Toward the end of the 1930s, their anti-aircraft battery would be upgraded by replacing the 40mm pom-pom guns with Bofors cannon and adding more 20mm weapons. The two ships would take part in two wars. 
the Winter War, which pitted Finland against the USSR, and the Continuation War, which was the Finnish part of World War II, again against the USSR, this time with Germany as an ally. In the first conflict, their role was mainly deterrence and anti-aircraft work, since the Red Navy wasn't especially keen to expend its limited supply of ships fighting on the Finns' terms off the Finnish coast. In the latter conflict, they got to use their main guns in anger for the first time, shelling Soviet bases and an airfield. This was followed by Operation Nordwind in September 1941, where a mixed fleet of Finnish and German ships were to distract the Soviet forces and lure them into a fight, thus taking attention away from a German invasion fleet that was heading for some Estonian islands. However, the Soviets didn't actually even notice the distraction fleet, and so they didn't actually do anything. Turning back, it seems that Ilmarinen's paravane sweeps had caught a couple of mines, but without this being noticed, the turn dragged the mines into contact and they exploded. Well built or not, a couple of full-scale sea mines on a ship this size were deadly, and the ship rolled over and sank within seven minutes, taking about two-thirds of the crew with it. Continuing alone, Vainamonen saw out most of the rest of the war patrolling the unusually quiet Baltic Sea, as the Soviets continued to refuse to send any surviving larger capital units out into battle. By the end of the war, with the USSR on the offensive, the Russians did try to find and sink the ship by air attack, but it proved remarkably difficult to locate. Unfortunately, that luck couldn't hold out, and with the end of the war, the Soviets demanded the ship as reparations, presumably mostly out of spite. She joined the Red Navy in 1947 as the Viborg, and was modernised before being used as an accommodation vessel, serving in this role for just over a decade until, despite some thought being given to sending her back, she was scrapped in 1966. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have a comment or suggestion for a ship to review, let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to comment on the pinned post for dry dock questions.